lot. And I'm always called Chuck to come up to the school and deal with the guys that bully me. I would get beat up, I would call him, and he would get beat up. That's why he preached today. Last night he talked about he's a mama's boy because he loves his mama. He a mama boy because he can't fight. Morehouse College. I spent four years here in Atlanta, and really, I appreciate um, Chuck because when I first came, he got me my first Macy's credit card, my first credit card when I was in college, and even today, he don't let me forget it. He always reminds me what he did for me. He always reminds me that he gave me my first credit card to me on the trips. But I would just say this though, and I'll be, and, I, and I'm really leaving here. And I can say a lot, but I won't. I thank God for him. Uh, I would not be the pastor that I am without sitting up under him, without training from him. I've been pastoring for 13 years. And Jelly. A lot of good things to help of the Lord with the training of my brother. And I have not been to a convention in a while. I think the last convention came to the convention I attended was in Detroit, Michigan. And I came tonight and preached about the potter's wheel where he was, you know, wasting a lot of time just flipping around and his message. <laughs> I tried to get the same type of, you know, with no substance, just spinning in the, the drum machine to talk. <laughs> but this is, and I haven't been to convention since Detroit, and I just want to um, give some advice to the new presiding bishop, Bishop Theodore Brooks. Because I noticed something from Detroit. How many, how many years ago was Detroit? Last year in Detroit? Four years ago to this convention, I sat through service last night. Mr. Brooks, I got one request in your new leadership. Please let somebody else do something in service. I mean, just the relationship that we uh, had uh, over these last year, last year's bishop, and we just want to thank you just being a part of us and we love you. We love you, Delight and First Lady. Um, we thank you as well. And even just coming down the road, taking the trip with Bishop uh, for the EBC meetings and for us to be able to uh, serve you as well. Um, we just want to thank you and let you know that we love you, Delight. First, I want to say thank you for the opportunity to serve you, Pastor. A lot of you don't know my story, but I did not grow up at Greater Grace. And Bishop Ellis took a chance on me and allowed me to serve in one of the highest offices. And for that, I'm grateful. I was afforded the opportunity to meet some very, very great people. Not just them, but their wives. Bonding and spending time getting to know the ins and the out of the business. And the Bishop Board has been so very kind to me. Not only them, but their lovely wives. They've been patient. They've shown me love. I have respected them and their wives. Everything that they represent this board and my pastor, it has been such an honor to serve. But when I look at this great man of God and what he represents, not only to Great Grace Temple, but to the body of Christ, to the PAW, he's a man of integrity, he's a man that keeps his word, he's relational, he spends time with each and every child that crosses his path. Not only that, but the families. His heart is for the people. He really, really is concerned about each and every one of us. And so today, as I look across the audience, I'm reminded of the parable in Matthew 25, talking about the gifts and the talents. And when I look at that, I think about Bishop and the five talents that were received by the one, and then they, he gained more. He gained five more. 
And my pastor is the busiest man on the planet. He can travel across the world, <laughs> but as soon as that plane hits the ground, he's off and running to his passion, his heart, Greater Grace Temple. And if he's not taking care of Greater Grace Temple, he's definitely giving an ear to those that call from the PFW. There's not one time that I have heard him say to me or to pass in his office to hear a conversation where he doesn't want to see someone. He has the heart for the people in business. He's a man of integrity. No one can say that they have ever bought my pastor. They've not paid him to say anything. He doesn't choose sides and sides. He's a man of integrity. And I'm so grateful that he's a busy man. He's not trying to uh, show a facade of being busy, but he's actually a busy man. He's putting his hand to work all the time. And so it's easy for him to look at individuals and their giftings because he's very gifted. And so he can look at all of us and put us uniquely in the place where we belong. And so for that, I'm sure you all are grateful that he afforded you many opportunities to do awesome things for God. Not because he would get the reward, but because he knew that it would bring you life and you would learn to grow and to trust in your relationship with the Lord. So today, I thank God for Bishop Charles H. Ellis III. I thank you for trusting in me an opportunity to show you the gifting that God had placed on me that I didn't even know that I acquired. I love you to life as that he's coined that. We used to say I love you to death, but he has coined I love you to life. And so today I'm gonna ask you to please stand with me to salute my pastor, Bishop Charles H. Ellis and his exemplary leadership to the PA. Sister Roxanne, Sister Dana. Mr. Bell, it's just a part of my seat. I want to express my appreciation and my tremendous respect for the tremendous job that you've done over the past eight years. You have been one of the greatest leaders of the Pentecostal Assembly of the world. And we have been honored and blessed uh, to have you as our presiding bishop over these past eight years. You and Lady Cassette, you all have set the bar. You've set the high standard uh, for us to follow. And we appreciate you. We love you to life. As Sister Dana said, you coined that, that, that phrase, and think now everybody says, and if they say, I love you to death, then quit, can't you? In fact, I mean, I love you tonight. And that's something that you have put in us. And I just appreciate what you have done, the impact that you have made uh, on not only the Pentecostal assemblies of the world, but Christendom in general. You are a giant uh, in the, uh, the religious uh, circles. And we are proud uh, to have had the opportunity uh, to sit with you and, and to serve you. And, and I hope that we have, have, have done it well. We, wanted you, we want you to know that we love you and we appreciate you. And not only myself, but uh, I want to recognize my lovely wife. Uh, the Yellow Rose of Texas. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they uh, have uh, supported me for this past eight years. And also, Bishop, there, there's a few folks in here uh, from Texas who love you. And Lady Chrisette and your family. I just want Texas, wherever you are. I want everybody from Texas to jump up on your feet, make some noise up in here. Let the designer know that we love you. I appreciate it.
bless you. And this time, it, it gives me great privilege uh, to present uh, our uh, MC who will close out the evening. Uh, and he is our newly elected uh, presiding bishop of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World. And this young man I've known probably, our friendship goes back probably 35 or 40 years ago. And uh, we have just decided that we're not going to allow a title or a position uh, to come between our friendship. And, uh, I love him, him and uh, First Lady Brooks. We just love them to life. We spend time in their home. We spend time in ours. And so I just celebrate. I told him the other night uh, that uh, I certainly would be praying for him. And he told me, he says, I need more than your prayers. I, I need your help. And so I want him to know that I'm here to help him because I want him to succeed Amen. in the assignment of God as Prince of the Holy Spirit. Maybe one more time, push your chair back, jump on your feet with me, and welcome to this podium, the Honorable Bishop Theodore Brooks. In actuality, Bishop Young and I go back 50 years, it was in San Antonio, Texas, at the Young People's Convention, where I met him and uh, then Elder Ronald Young, and uh, Bishop Lee, Bishop Mama Wagner was preaching, and I met with him, uh, Bishop Willie Ellis, and it's been a long journey, and God has blessed us. I thank God for the friendship that we developed over the years, and uh, this is a great and honorable man. Um, he's my brother, love him to life. And I think we ought to stand and give this honorable man of God a round of applause. Uh, and lady all, go to the We've had some fun and we will have more fun. The only thing that I have not done with them was go on the golf course. I have a set of golf clubs in my garage. They have more cobwebs on them, and spider webs, and no other kind of webs on them. As a matter of fact, Lady J made me go buy her a set. I took her to the golf course one time, it was in Florida, and I tried to hit the ball, and I hit it into the pond. <laughs> she hit it and went across. And that's when I knew that God said, golfing is not your turn. <laughs> and I have not been back. They, Elder Marshall Taylor says, I won't be back no more. No more, no more. And I have not been on a golf course. Amen. But we're grateful tonight. We've come to bless the Lord. There are two gentlemen that are going to come next. And uh, they are truly been friends uh, to this honorable man of God. Uh, they have shared with him down through the years. Uh, they have Horse been Smith. friends. They have been golfers. I don't know if uh, the other guy golfs. Uh, Bishop Gold, I don't know if he golfs or not. I know uh, Bishop Montauri uh, golfs. Uh, he's like me. Uh, he hit the ball into the brush, and he picks it up, and he throws it back on the green. <laughs> That's, that's my kind of man. <laughs> Roll it into the, the little cup. So they're going to come and uh, share with us the time, the laughter. Amen. The honorable bishops. Amen. The first assistant presiding bishop. And then Bishop Donald Golden. Come on, put your hand together. Praise God, everybody. It is a it is blessing to be here this evening. And Dana was getting all mushy and teary-eyed, and I said, all right, it's time to get light now. Uh, but you know, uh, Bishop David Ellis uh, took me into the PAW program committee at a very young age, and so I used to go to the meetings, and all of y'all that know Bishop Ellis, he drove very fast. And one day, we were going to the hospital to visit somebody, 
and it was this, this truck slowed around. He pulled around the truck and almost slammed into the back of a parked 18-wheeler. And I mean, the car came that close. He put on the brakes. And so the first time, uh, uh, I almost said Charles, Bishop Charles Ellis picked me up from the airport uh, and was taking me to the hotel. I thought to myself, he's getting ready to finish off with his daddy stuff. Because <laughs> he drives very fast. In fact, he drives fast everywhere. We were in Mexico one year. He was driving and he got stopped by the cops. And he came back to the car and started taking up an offer. And he said, we got to bring this cop off. <laughs> Uh, one, of, one of the other things that, that happened recently, uh, we were uh, in Mexico and when they got to the hotel, uh, he said, uh, we stopped and these people talked him into uh, this package. Uh, he says, we're going to get uh, $300 worth of groceries, we're going to get a real car for $9.95 a week. <laughs> And uh, we're like, oh, okay. So we got up the next morning. We thought we were going to go see this little timeshare thing for about 30 minutes. Five hours later, I said, is this worth $300 worth of groceries? And then we found out it was 300 pesos. <laughs> That's my friend, Bishop Charles Ellis. The Church City Man. Gary Green and Raphael Washington are hard at the fall. They're just natural born comedians, but Bishop Charles H. Ellis is our friend. All of our lives we've known each other, and he tells his church and most places he goes, and I'm in the company. And I'm the only one that can put him out of his own room that he paid for. I'm going to tell y'all why. We were in Phoenix one time. I was preaching and he was bringing his group, a uh, group of leaders to uh, Tommy Barnett's leadership conference. And uh, he said, well, man, you might as well stay and hang out with us at that conference, a leadership conference. I said, cool. I just come over to your room and we stay together. And he, of course, he opened the door and invited me. And... Uh, I got up in the morning, he was out of the room and the door was shut. It was kind of like a double room. And I got up in the morning, the door shut. I thought he had left me. I said, Doc, where are you going? He said, Nero, you snore so loud I had to get up out of my own room. <laughs> he said, I tried to stay. We had double beds, of course, double beds, right? Double beds. Somebody said double beds. <laughs> double beds, Dr. Dr. Matthews. Y'all heard him tell the story about it. He sleep very neat. He said, man, I just put the pillars on my ears, on my head. He said, I feel sorry for your wife. <laughs> and uh, that's one memorial, me 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 memorable story uh, that I have. And uh, uh, he calls us early in the morning, Saturday, when you're trying to get all your rest. And I was still working at 9 to 5 then when we first started our calls, early Saturday morning calls. We call ourselves the Sanhedrin Court. I think I'm the first one he calls. 6 a.m., oh, Doc, man, I'm so tired, man. I'm like, Nick, bro, go back to sleep. It's 6 a.m. I was just turning over. And he gonna get on me for snoring, right? But he's messing up my rest. But we had the Sanhedrin, and when he first became the young people's leader, we. Uh, when we first started getting on these calls, there was more of us on these calls. And, uh, they called me one night at 3 a.m. on a Friday night, early Saturday morning. It was 3 a.m. There was about 10 of us on that call. Of course, uh, he has a way of getting you wide awake. And he said, you know, I just became president. I'm going to have to start shaking some big rolls off already. Y'all excuse me. You know, we, we just having fun. Like, like Raphael said, we don't have no filter sometime. Amen. He said, I'm gonna have to start getting rid of some Negroes already. I said, well, what's going on? He started telling us the story. 
Needless to he know the person he was talking about was on the phone. He said, Charles, I'm on here. So, so, so we limited our company on the phone, and we start doing roll call. Who's on here? Who's on here? When he was young, he was leading. He came into service one night. Service was rolling, and our uncle John Lane, he was a he was a sax player, and he had his sax gone. He had pulled down uh, 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 Dr. Jackson. He had pulled down one of the choir mics with his sax. He said. Who? Who told Uncle John to put that sack to that mic and pull that choir mic down? I said, I don't know. <laughs> Bishop Ellis went right over there and grabbed that mic and took it out of Uncle John's sex. Uncle John said, your daddy wouldn't have never done me like that. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. The time is up here. I'm say, man, God bless you. We love you, Bishop Ellis. We could say things, but we 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 are real friends, Amen. We are real friends, praise the Lord. We love you. We thank God serving with you, and thank God for our relationship. We are true brothers from other mothers, and we love our Bishop Charles Ellis. And ain't nobody gonna bother him. Y'all hear what I'm saying? God bless you. At this time, we'll take the opportunity and continue to announce our guests who are seated on the day. Man.
awesome man with the word of God. And I love that because without God, man, we do nothing. We can be nothing. And with God, we do all things. And I'm here today because of God. Amen. Bless you. Give me a safe travel here. This is the Tuesday tradition, and I want to be best friend. I'm part of the I want to thank each and one of you guys for being a part of Bishop, for supporting Bishop all these years. Bishop in Detroit, where I live in Detroit, and he has done a great job. I want to tell Bishop, Bishop, keep doing what you've been doing. Whatever you've been doing, it's working greatly. Amen. I want to say God bless everybody. And bless Thank you everybody for the support that you got, guys have gave me over the year. I couldn't be the person I am without you guys. May God bless everybody. Amen. Excuse me. I, I got to say this. I'm not mad at like that, but you know, you could have told me it was a black tie. <laughs> That's all nice and handsome. The black towel and no got a great candy. All kind of colors on it. You know all like that. Man, all I can do is show up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 I came in now. No, I see, that's not something I goofy, y'all. So forgive me, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> said, I think I qualify for a tax exemption. <laughs> and during that time, being in the home, that's when Bishop Charles and I became very close. We both started preaching during that period of time. We'd stay up at night and drilling each other on Bible verses. That was during the spiritual times. <laughs> ah, but... There were those times when we were just brother and sister. I used to wonder why I had so many friends that wanted to spend the night. I was naive and like, oh, well, I'm gonna get naked and spend the night. And then I found out they didn't like me. They liked him. And it was even during that time I, I met then Chrisette Green. Mm -hmm. And she was my friend. Please understand this. She was my friend. I loved her. My, my friend for real. When I would preach at her church, we would spend time together when she would be home from school. And because she was my friend, I never, ever, ever, ever introduced her to Charles. 
and stuff would come back to the house, we'd be so excited. And because he would bring back everything. And I remember one day, I would say, hey, why are you bring all this food? All this junk food in here? Well, Mama Chucky was with me. You know I can't do this. No, you don't tell me put that in the back. He would just get away with everything. But his father was always intrigued by the fact that he was so close to me. And I remember once when I was the state youth president, and I had the state convention there. And that's when Bishop Ellis was in charge of renting the auditorium and all. He called me in the office one day and he said, let me ask you something. He said, these folks around this city that's got big churches and a whole lot of members, and they try to rent that church, and they can't afford to rent it. Because Chucky charging them so much. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
when I was working for the mayor of Detroit. And the mayor said, you know, Bishop Ellis' son uh, wants to run for commission. <laughs> and one of the things I did for the mayor was help run campaigns of the candidates he supported. I said, oh, well, that should be a slam dunk, Mr. Mayor. I'll go and work with this campaign, he said. So I began to work with the campaign, and what you don't know, Chuck, is while the mayor was asking me to work for your campaign, your dad, Bishop David Ellis, was asking me to sabotage <laughs> that campaign. He <laughs> said, Greg, Chuck has a plan and God has a plan, and me and God are the master planners. <laughs> We have bigger plans for him, and thank God uh, I'm responsible for him being presiding bishop because had he won, had he won, we wouldn't have the great bishop Charles Ellis. And as I leave, I want you all to know, as many of you probably do, that the Great and Grace community uh, are perhaps the most preeminent and appreciated and community-oriented church in Detroit. There's no question about it. Everyone wants to bring their community endeavors to greater grace because they know it will be supported. They know they support the community. And many people want to know, well, how did Chuck Ellis become the youngest presiding bishop and one of the youngest bishops? from the PAW, the nomination in many years, well, service. That's how. It's very easy, it's service. When he came and began working at the church, that was service. Being tutored, being mentored, that was service. When he came and began helping our young people get back in school, service. When he began housing our seniors so that they could have a place to live in decency and respect, that was service. When he served our community for every rally, every activist event, every protest event, without fear, that was service. So if you want to become the youngest presiding bishop, if you want to become this or that, then serve. If you want 10,000 members at your church, then serve. If you want the respect of the community, then serve. If you want every Democratic president or presidential candidate in the last 50 years to visit with you at your church, then sir. Because if you begin your journey with service, you too, you too, if you begin that journey with service, can be the next presiding bishop. Isn't that right, Bishop Brooks? Service. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Bishop Brooks, you're Bishop, 
you got to see how regular of a person that he was. Whether he was, you know, leader of this, leader of that, after every service, you can touch him, you can talk to him, and he really, what you see is what you get. So, it's, um, he's been, my name wasn't on the list to get into the boardroom, um, Pastor Green, but I'm assuming that he was a man of integrity, and he's definitely been um, a great role model um, to me and a lot of you that are in here. But I will close by saying he is also, even though he's one of the youngest presiding bishops of all time, there is a record that he holds that no other presiding bishop will ever, ever be able to surpass. He sure did. He finished two terms as the presiding bishop, eight years. He finished that faster than he finished his undergrad degree at Wayne State. <laughs> I love you, and I'm looking forward to the direction I work in. Wow. That's my man. That's my man. And I'm going to wear your jeans. I'm going to take a picture. I'm going to send it back to him. I can hear my sons now. Excuse me? No, with my grandchildren, they be like, oh, Poppy, I'm off your mind. What's wrong with him? Yeah, no, no, what's wrong with Poppy? He done went crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I need you to stand for a moment and put your hands together for our first lady, the Honorable Lady Reset Ellis. Um, first, let me give honor to Christ who's ahead of my life, and I, I have to start my remarks, and I will um, leave my husband for last, but I want to first thank uh, the constituency of the PAW, all of the lay members of the PAW. I want to thank you for these past eight years have been absolutely a privilege and an honor to serve you as your First Lady. As I said the other night, I want to thank you for all of your love. I want to thank you for all of your prayers. I want to thank you for all of your encouragement. And you know, people ask me all the time, you know, how do you feel to be um, the First Lady of the PAW? And you know, I've been wearing this big smile, and you know, and sometimes people, because of the smile, they think, oh, she's so relieved that it's over. But it really is a, a, a smile of joy and of peace because I really believe that I have served my role and I've done what I believe that God has called me to do. And I hope that something that I've said and something that I've done has been a difference. But I want you to know it has really been a joy. It really has been a pleasure. It has not been a strain. It has not been difficult. It has not been hard. It has been what God has called me to. And so I want to appreciate you for that. I want to also um, thank all the pastors, the elders, and um, suffering bishops for your support as well. I appreciate you. And to all of the first ladies that are here, just know that you are my heart. I, being a first lady, I understand the journey. I understand the smiling when sometimes you feel like crying. I understand who you are. And that's one of the reasons why I started the relief retreat because as first ladies, we need some relief. And so I truly want you to know that I appreciate each and every one of you. And to um, the first assistant presiding bishop, Bishop Richard Young, I want you to know I truly appreciate the support that you have given to my husband for eight years. I want you to know how much we appreciate you. Absolutely, we appreciate you because my husband would say all the time, and I want you to know there was never anything, everything that he said in public about the support that he received from you is what he said in private. And so I appreciate you because I know when you are a leader of leaders, it's sometimes very challenging when you lead other leaders, but to know that you have someone who will have your back 
not just in the boardroom, but outside the boardroom, makes a difference. So I salute you and celebrate you on this evening. Let's get Bishop Richard Young. And to the second assistant presiding bishop, Bishop Theodore Brooks. I can echo the same sentiment as well. I believe that my husband couldn't have had any two better assistant presiding bishop than both of you. I appreciate your support as well. I, I appreciate the laughter. I appreciate all that you did to make his eight years the best that they could be. So I just want you to know from a very grateful heart, I appreciate you as well. Put your hands together for Bishop I want to also um, celebrate on this evening the bishops' wives. I want all of the bishops' wives to stand. All of the bishops' wives, if you would, stand. Let's give them a big round of applause. I want you to be to know that I love you very dearly. I thank God for each of you and, you know, coming into this role um, as a First Lady, you really don't know what to expect and sometimes, you know, you don't even know what is expected of you. But the way that I try to live my life is not to necessarily try to be a, copy, a carbon copy of someone else, but really to endeavor to be the best that God has called me to be. And because I am in the position of a bishop's wife. I have a heart for all of the bishop's wives, and one of the things I wanted to do was to make sure that all of the bishop's wives felt special. Sometimes, I know you serve and you do it because you know your reward is coming, but I think it's just right to be appreciated for all of the support that you give, the endless hours that you give to your husbands, to your local churches, and to um, the PAW, and so, one of the things that I endeavored to do was to make sure every single year that you receive some small token, some gift, just to say thank you. Just to say thank you because of all of your hard work and, and because of all the things that you have done. So if I could have given each of you a million dollars, um, it wasn't in the budget. <laughs> but if I could, trust me, I would have. So I hope that the small tokens of love that I gave you every year were appreciated. And just know that I have you in my heart. God bless you and I love each of you to life. I want to also, and I'm going to ask her if she would come really, really quickly and if you would give me that gift. I want to have um, Sister Cherie Lovett to come up really, really quickly. <laughs> there is enough time, and I know I have to move relatively quickly because I'm going to get the eye from the former presiding bishop in a minute. Um, but I just want to recognize someone who has been with me almost as long as I can remember. I was sharing with um, Lady Brooks earlier tonight, and I said, there are people that come into your life that make an impact. There are people that come into your life that make a difference. And there are people that come into your life that you can't even remember or recall when they came into your life. I only remember when we met, her brother was my husband's best friend. I'm talking about best friend in the entire world, from Mobile, Alabama. Tim Shaw, country boy from Mobile, <laughs> Alabama. And I remember after my husband and I got married, we were at a convention, and Tim, um, Cherie and her sister Faye were eating in a restaurant, and Tim said, I want you to meet my sister, I want you to meet my sisters. And we went to the restaurant, and I met Cherie, and I met Faye. And I don't know, I always tell her she's my, my Jonathan. I mean, she loves me so much. She believes in me so much. She's always seen so much more in me than I've seen in myself. And for as long as I can remember, without children, when I had children, every child that I had, she would fly to Detroit, 
and she would stay with me for about a week to help me with my children every single year. And I will say this, secretly, she was single at the time, and secretly, I'll just confess, I think I was kind of praying that you would never get married so that you could always come and be with us. But then she met her fabulous husband, um, Larry, and I remember telling Larry, now Larry, I'm gonna give you the okay, but you just gotta know, she still get to come to Detroit when I want her to come to Detroit. So that was a part of the agreement. But I want you to know how much I love you. You have served me year after year. And the Bible says those that would be greatest among you must first be a servant. And this is the epitome of what a true servant is. And so on tonight, I just want to give you this. It's, it's a small token, literally. It is a small token, but when I was in Rome, I saw this, I thought about you, and I just had to pick it up. I love you, my girlfriend. And then I would ask if Lady Brooks would come. that you never judge a book by its cover. I so can remember, and I believe it was probably um, the banquet when we were celebrating um, Horace Smith when he was going on office. And I remember we were um, coming to the banquet and this particular time they had me seated next to Lady Brooks. And everybody in here know that when you go to a banquet or you go somewhere, you really, when you're going to be there kind of long, you really want to sit next to somebody that you know. So the conversation is easy. Yeah, you just that familiarity, that comfort zone. And so this particular time, they set me next to Lady Brooks. And I thought to myself, oh my God, what am I going to talk to her about? You know, I said, oh, this is going to be a challenging night. We're going to be sitting there and she's going to be looking at me. And I'm going to be looking at her. And after you say, praise the Lord, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine. That was going to be the end of the conversation. Well, to my surprise, we talked all night long. All night. When I tell you, she is hilarious. We laughed and laughed and laughed. And I'm telling you, that's when I fell in love with Lady Brooks. And anybody knows her, I picked it up soon that one of her sayings is, Mercy. 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 And I just want you to know, Lady Brooks, I love you so much. You are such a warm, kind, beautiful, you have, beautiful woman, you have encouraged me, you have prayed for me, you came to my relief retreats, you've been on my 6 a.m. prayer call, anything that I've asked you to do, and I know sometimes it made you step out of your comfort zone a little bit, but you did it because I asked you. And you know, you said to me today, you know, I'm not that person that's up front, I'm really a background person, and so, you know, I didn't do a whole lot. And as I said to you a moment ago, you did more than enough. It was more than enough to know that you supported me, that you had my back, and that I could look to my left, look to my right, and know that you were there. So I want you to know when I was in Rome, I saw a little something, and I thought about you, and I wanted to bring it back just to say thank you for being you. I wouldn't want you to be to anybody else other than who you are. And I would ask that Lady R would come.
Wow, what can I say about Lady R? You know, Lady R, Arlene, we call her Lady R lovingly. She has been my friend for as long as I can remember. There, many times, or most of the times when I started coming to the convention, I would always run into Lady Arlene. And when you're, you know, I wasn't raised in the PAW, I was raised in the PCAF, so I was, you know, just kind of getting my feet wet, wet and kind of learning some of the faces and learning who, who individuals were. But there are certain people that you look for that make, that calm you down when you seem like, oh, I'm so glad I saw them. And Lady R was always that person. Every single time I would come to the convention and I would see her before I could say something to her, she would say something to me. It was always a, a kind word. She was always she was so sweet and so nice to me. And you know, people don't have to be nice to you. Sometimes when you're the outsider, people are like, let me check you out and, and you know, try to figure out who you are. But you were never like that. You loved me, you embraced me from the very first time that we met, and I've never forgotten that. I want to thank you too for supporting me. I want to thank you for having my back. I want to thank you for you know, coming to the Relief Retreat and just being a part of everything that I asked you. And I know there were times when you were like, you want me to do what? I was like, yes, I want you to do it. And you did it. And so I'm telling you, it is. it feels so good to be in a position when you know people have your back and when they're praying for you and they want you to succeed. And I know that my success in the position that I held is because you were there. So I love you, I appreciate you, and I pray that God will continue to give you the desires of your heart. Amen. I was in Rome. <laughs> And I thought about you. You're such an elegant woman, and I hope that this is something that you'll love. God bless you. And then I want to recognize really, really quickly, um, I had two of my girlfriends that came, and I know one had to leave, but I want to recognize one of my four sufficient girlfriends, Laura Cherie, and her husband, Leo. Love you. Thank you so much for coming on this evening. Um, and then I want to recognize my two children, Kiara and Buddy. Oftentimes, the, the children sometimes are the ones that get left out um, when you do celebration because the the, the bishop, the presider, and the first lady of the PAW, most of the comments have been about them. And on tonight, I want to say to Kiara and Buddy that we appreciate you because as PK children, and many of you in here um, are, were PK children, you all sacrificed too. You sacrificed the time of your dad, my time, and neither one of you have ever complained. And I'm just so thankful to God that you all have participated in the PAW. You have supported us. You've never given us a moment's worry. And so I just want you to know how much we love you, how much we appreciate you. And I'm just excited because I know that God has great things in store for both of you. And so I'm going to ask all of you if you would mind standing and giving my children, our children, to their And then finally, as I bring my remarks to a close, I just want to just talk about my husband just for a few minutes. I know um, tonight has been long, but it is our last night. And as my husband always says, he that has the might has the power. And so since I have the might, I still have a little bit of power. And so I want to talk about my husband and who he is. We've heard so many things about him on tonight, and I, I can concur that all of what you heard is true. My husband, my son probably said it best when he said, what you see is what you get. He is the same way as home, at home as he is here um, at the PW. But I thought about 
what I would say um, about my husband. And normally I just talk off the cuff and just say whatever comes to mind. But the more I started to think about it, I said, you know what, this would be perfect. And so just indulge me just for a minute. I thought, I thought about who he was and the word that came to my mind was legend. And if you look in the dictionary of what the definition of legend is, it is a collection of stories about an admirable person. And tonight, I want you to know who this admirable person is. And I, I thought about the word legend, and so I came up with an acronym for it. And so the L stands for leader. Someone said that if you are a leader and you're out, and you're out, and nobody is following you, you are simply out taking a walk. But I want you to know that my husband has never been out just simply taking a walk. My husband has been that individual that has been the leader among leaders. Someone said that the lowest level of leadership is that people will follow you because of your title. But it's another level, higher level of leadership when people follow you because they believe you can take them somewhere. And so my husband has taken this organization to the next level. Let the church say, amen. E stands for energy. My husband is energy personified. I really believe that he out-energizes the Energizer Bunny. How many of you would agree with that? Sometimes I look at him and he is able to get more accomplished in 24 hours than anybody that I know. It's almost as if he could get 25, if he could get 25 hours out of 24 hours, he would. And so he is just full of energy. And G, two words came to my mind, and I know you're only supposed to use one, but I'm gonna use two because I have a mic. And so, the first one is gifted. He is very gifted. I mean, I'm always amazed at how much he can remember. He knows almost everybody's name. And sometimes it makes me feel bad because people look at me and he's calling their names. And when they come to me, I know you know my name. I'm like, oh, I'm having a senior moment. Can you remind me what your name is? So I'm just saying, y'all, please don't hold me to the same standard of him because he knows everybody's name. I'm like, okay. How do you remember their name? Repeat their name five times and then try to associate it with something else, okay? That's Sister Karen. You have a sister Karen, so when you look at her, think about your sister. That's the kind of thing I have to do. He remembers everything. The other G would be generous. He is one of the most generous individuals that you will ever meet. Many of you that are in here tonight, you will hear it because he gave a ticket away. He's so generous, he pushes me to be generous. Those of you know, I'm an entrepreneur at heart, so I brought books to sell. I really did. I packed my books and I brought books to sell. And then he got up before the whole congregation and said, I brought books, my new books. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give all of my books away. <laughs> so because he was giving all of his books away to the kids, guess who had to give all away. So he always teaches lessons of generosity. The E stands for elevating. It is a fact that during his administration, he elevated four female bishops. Four female and two had um, diocese. And so we praise God for that. And then the N, it's a simple four letter word. And it stands for nice, nice, nice. I believe that it is not sacrilegious to say that if we met Jesus, Christ himself, I believe he would be nice. People don't remember, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. I appreciate the fact that my husband is nice. And then the D stands for dedicated. He has been dedicated for the last eight years to the Pentecostals Assemblies of the World. 
dedicated in every way. I don't even have enough time to talk about the many places that he has gone. Don't have enough time to tell you all the stories that he's flown to Atlanta. And I know we're in Atlanta and we love Atlanta, but I'll just say this. He hates the Atlanta airport with a passion. And I tell him to stop making that his affirmation because he says it all the time. Almost always when he flies into Atlanta, something happens. So we're going to change that application and we're going to start to say, I love flying into Atlanta. Say it. I love flying into Atlanta. So because he's changed his affirmation, every time he flies into Atlanta, he's not going to miss a flight or it's not going to be delayed or there's not going to be technical difficulty. He's not going to have to sleep for hours on a bench and the stories go on and on. But if I told you how many places he's been, how many hours and then he's going there to come, he has been dedicated. He has been dedicated to his church, Greater Grace Temple, and we appreciate him juggling all that he has to juggle. And then he has been dedicated to his family. He has been dedicated to me as his wife. He has been dedicated to our children. Our house has not gone lacking because he has been the presider or the pastor of Great Grace Temple. So we appreciate the dedication that we have in the last few years to the Pentecostalist to Great Grace Temple and to our family. And before I take our seat, I would be remiss if I didn't say there is one more thing that he's been dedicated to. And now that he is no longer the presider, he's going to get back to something that's so crucial to him, and that is his dedication to golf. God bless you. Come on, put your hands together. Thank God for your service. We're just about to come to the yard. Uh, the, uh, the 39th Episcopal District will be coming up here as they come. Uh, presider, uh, on behalf of the board, we will make our presentation to you very shortly. Uh, we just we want to reconcile the books, make sure everything is fine. We take care of all of our business, but you know we're gonna take care of you. We're gonna make sure that all is well, and that uh, you have a little golf money. Play a little golf after you take first lady out to find hotel and a dinner. Yeah, yeah, buddy, gotta go. Our boy gotta go. And Kiara gotta go. The first, uh, the 39th Episcopal District of the Bahamas, Turks, and Caicos Islands, and the Pentecost of the world have a presentation today. Good evening, everyone. We're delighted to be here in Atlanta. Thank you. I will try to do this in record time. I've been saying my goodbyes uh, all week long, so I don't have a lot to say uh, because I said everything to the board. Uh, in our meetings, and I gave all the gifts and things we brought back, and especially to the two assistant presiders and all of that, and let everybody know how much they meant to be there. So I moved right past uh, the board. Uh, I'm coming to uh, South Carolina uh, in the month of October for our council, and I will certainly make some statements there. But I just appreciate you all, love you all to life, and I think that this is going to give us more opportunity not to run in South Carolina and run out of South Carolina. But now to come in early and leave late and really spend some quality time outside of church time. Just spend some time sharing with you and just fellowship in the group and And thank you for supporting. Uh, the Great Grace Temple, uh, I'll see you all on Sunday, but you all are the greatest church in the world. Uh, to all of you, the people of God, who have supported us down through the years and, and to and to the staff, you know I'm coming back uh, to take you all to the Skyline Club in Indianapolis and we'll have our farewell and we'll cry and we'll hug and we'll squeeze and all that there. Uh, but we will be having one last conference call Tuesday at 4 o'clock. <laughs> uh, and then we'll drive in there and we'll have our last goodbyes. Uh, but to everybody, uh, to my family, to my brothers and sisters who came here from uh, Detroit out of their busy schedules and for everybody who has assisted us and helped us uh, in one way or another, uh, to all of our special guests. Uh, Tommy, uh, it's a great sacrifice for him to come. He has many things to do. Uh, Willie Bean and the sister coach of the Golden State Warriors and summer leagues going on now and all of that. And God was really blessed in his way with him that Steve Kerr has turned the team over to him in the summer, amen, to actually coach the team and to get a head coaching experience. And he's got a phenomenal journey. And I told him on uh, Sunday at the uh, other Sunday at service, he needs to write a book. And uh, we will help him write that book because his journey 
is really a phenomenal journey and it will bring hope to so many other, ch uh, other kids. Uh, to John Newman and Omarosa, who had to catch a flight, 6 o'clock flight early in the morning, and going to pack and all of that. And to Judge Greg Mathis, and, and to all of our special guests, Tavis Smiley, uh, you all know he's in litigation uh, with PBS service uh, because of their termination of him, and he's doing deposition. But he did uh, send the gifts as he has promised, and sends his regrets that he was not able to make it, and will make it up to us at a later time. To my children, to my family, uh, to my wife, uh, to my mother, those that are most dear to me, uh, you all have made the tremendous sacrifices that you really didn't have to make. And you could have made it hard on me. You could have made, you could have just made it very stressful for me. But you all allowed me to serve and to be used as God would have it. And uh, I certainly love you all to life. And we're going to have some great times. It's been some real quality times, amen, in the months coming. But I just want to say to everyone who has worked with our administration uh, in whatever capacity, I thank you, I appreciate you, and I love you to life. I never thought that one person, amen, was trying to sabotage, sabotage the administration or trying to make things difficult, but you were all working. You know, I, I came in here with one band, one sound, and that's what you all have been. We work together in concert, and I appreciate you, and thank God for each and every one of you. And as I said to Mr. Brooks, amen, in the boardroom, as I've said, uh, not in the boardroom, but as I've said, uh, publicly to the audience, uh, we will be your number one champions, uh, uh, champion supporters. We will be your number one rah-rah uh, uh, team and pep squad. Uh, we are not sitting back, amen, and uh, hoping that somebody doesn't outdo us. I hope you do outdo us three, four, and five times and the more, and we'll be the first to help you to do that. Because I'm always one that says, amen, the church has to be bigger than us. The church has to be bigger than us. The kingdom has to be bigger than us. So I'm not trying to be the best, I'm not trying to be the brightest, but God, know, God knows I'm not. But I just want to make sure that when the, the history is written, that the time that I serve, somebody will say, he didn't do everything, and as a matter of fact, he didn't do everything right, but he showed made a difference in the lives of a whole lot of people, and he helped the third of the kingdom and to bring it to another direction. So thank you so much for coming in, and of course, I'm Dana, Gary, and Ray, and Valerie, and all those people, I've already said everything, amen, to them at the board room. So I'm pretty much done, and again, I'm going to follow up when I see you all, amen, in Indianapolis in a few weeks, and in South Carolina in October, and Greater Grace, y'all will be home on Sunday, amen. <laughs> I'm going to spend the weekend in Atlanta, the devil is alive, amen. You're going to play with me tomorrow, and we're going back home. But thank you, brothers and sisters. You didn't have to spend the money. You didn't have to make this kind of expense. Amen. It's not, it's not cheap to come to this kind of event. But thank you so very kindly. Uh, Willie, Tommy, uh, uh, Judge Mathis, uh, and, 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 and uh, John Omaroso, and everybody that came to make it special. And I wanted my friends to come because I knew that you all like them, you watch them, whether it's in sports or whether it's in journalism or whether it's on TV or in the boxing arena. And I figured that you would really love having them here and being able to fellowship with them. So thank you so very kindly. I am done. Amen. I'm ready to drop the mic. <laughs> And consider it eight years. I hope you've enjoyed these eight years. It might not have been the best, but I sure hope that you enjoy it. My wife has gifts for all of the bishop's wives. My wife has gifts for all of the bishop's wives. Where are they? Amen. They are, they are to my right. Amen. They are back by the screen. So bishop's wives, please, amen, please. They have, a, they have gifts for each and every one of you. Bishop James, come please. Okay. And there are gifts for the bishops as well. Amen. How do they know the difference? Amen. They're wrapped differently. They said you will know. Bishop James gave us his own come, and he is going to come.